Okay, as promised, we're going to look at an incline problem with friction included. So uh, let's take our incline, and we'll call this, ang this angle theta, general angle. We'll call this, as we did before, M1. Goes around a massless pulley, uh, we'll say, and it goes to M2. However, there is a friction present, and we'll say that there is there is kinetic friction. And we know from our formulas of kinetic friction that F sub K, that's the frictional force, is equal to this coefficient value, this ratio, times the normal force of the block along the incline. Of course, it's on an incline, so therefore the friction is going to be, normal force is going to be a little different. So we're going to say in this case that uh, there is friction. However, we're also going to specify that M2 is much greater. That's that double arrow there, much greater than M1, because we want to ensure that this moves down in that direction and this goes up. You could solve it the other way, but it will make a difference. And the way we'll see that is because we'll determine which direction friction is acting. If M1 goes up the ramp, which way will friction act? Friction will act down the ramp. And if M1 is sliding down the ramp, then friction will act up the ramp. So it makes a difference in how we draw our friction forces. And so the equations are not quite self-correcting in this case. They, you won't get, if you pick the wrong direction, you'll just get the wrong answer. So we have to make sure we know what direction these things are moving. So again, we draw free body diagrams. So we'll have uh, M1. Oh, so the objective here is to, once again, as we have been doing, Find the acceleration, if I can spell it here, find the acceleration of M1 and M2. So we draw free body diagrams. M1, again, is at the angle M1, and M2. And we'll do this. Again, using symbols, even though it gets a little messy, uh, only because if I pick numbers, then you get an answer like 5, and it doesn't really mean a whole lot. But um, we'll look at the equation, and then maybe we'll do a numerical example later. Well, once again, we're back where we started. We need to draw in the free body diagram for M1. And as we can see, it's going to be very similar to the other problems we, we've done, except we're going to have to add friction. There's going to be an upward tension because the rope is going to be pulling it upward. And as you can see, the movement is upward, so my positive direction for x is going to be up the ramp. It's going to be accelerating upward. Another force, not the normal force. What else? We have the weight, which we, can, we have to split into components, parallel and perpendicular to the x and y, uh, parallel and per perpendicular to the ramp, or parallel to the x-axis and parallel to the y-axis. So this becomes m1g times the cosine of the angle, and this becomes m1g times the sine of the angle. And then we have one more force, friction. And which way does it act? We said it acts down the ramp because it's trying to go up. And so there's my Force. It's not mu sub k, it's f sub k. It's the frictional force. So I've got a whole bunch of forces on that first one there. M2 is going to be much simpler. I've just got a rope going up, so that's going to be the tension holding it back from falling, even though it's moving downward. And I've got its weight, M2g, pulling it down. So those are the forces acting on the object. Since M2 is going down, down is going to be positive. And so this arrow will be positive. This arrow will be negative. Correspondingly, let's look at mass 1 again. Uh, positive x is up the ramp. That means this is going to be positive. 
uh, friction arrow is pointed in the other direction. That's going to be negative. And the M1G times the sine of theta arrow, that's pointed in the wrong direction. That's going to be negative also. And we'll need that in our summation. So let's now go to uh, the second law equations. And we'll write down, as we did before, the sum of the forces in the x direction. Now there's going to be how many forces? There's going to be one, two, three forces in the x direction in our newly defined incline x direction. And that's going to equal m1 times the acceleration. So uh, let's see what forces they are. Well, we've got um, T is positive, so that's going up, so that's positive. We've got uh, M1G sine theta, that's negative. That's going down the ramp. And we've got friction acting down the ramp, too. So we'll put that in parentheses, and that's going to equal M1A. Um, we can solve for the tension there. Let's do that. You get tension equals M1A plus M1G sine theta plus the friction. Okay, so pretty much we can't go any further there, and now we'll have to look at the summation of the forces in the y direction. In the y direction, I have uh, this force and this force, only two, only two forces again. And uh, once again, in the y direction, nothing's happening. So I have no acceleration, so that's going to be zero. So I've got F sub n minus M1G cosine of the angle equals zero. And so the normal force equals M1G times the cosine of the angle. And we saw that earlier in one of the other videos. Uh, that that would become a factor in our friction calculations. Now, it depends on what's known in the problem. If they give you enough to calculate the friction right, a, right, a, uh, right away, then you'll be able to calculate that number right there. But if they don't, uh, then maybe you have to find the acceleration. Uh, if they give you the acceleration, maybe you can solve for the friction. So it depends on how the problem is stated. Let's look at the equation for mass 2. Sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal m2a. There are only two, so there are only two forces there. Down is positive, so I have m2g minus t equals m2a. And I'll solve for the tension there as well. I get uh, minus t equals m2a minus m2g. And uh, therefore, plus T equals minus M2A plus M2G. So those are my equations for tension. And once again, because I have so many unknowns, um, essentially I'm looking for the acceleration. In any problem, clearly the unknowns would be the tension or the acceleration. However, I suppose they could, you could always have an unknown masses given tensions and accelerations, you could probably try to solve for what the masses would be. But let's combine these two equations now. In one, we can set them equal to each other because they're both equal to the tension. So I get this very long equation, m1a plus m1g sine theta plus f sub k equals minus m2a plus m2g. All right, so, well, What's got to happen? Well, we have to collect the accelerations all on one side. So I'm going to add M2A to both sides. So I get M1A plus M2A um, equals M2G. And I'm also in one step going to subtract M1G sine theta minus F sub K. So I'm going to subtract these from both sides too to just save some time here. Minus F sub K. So that's going to become a very large uh, numerator, okay? And once again, I have to factor out in this 
acceleration, I get m1 plus m2. They're connected. It's always going to be m1 plus m2. If you get m1 minus m2, you did something wrong. Uh, m1g sine beta minus the friction. And finally, we come up with our equation, which is going to be that whole long collection of numbers. If you had real numbers here, these would just be much simpler, and you'd be combining them over m1 plus m2. And that's essentially the equation, although we can actually modify that a little bit more, which we'll do in one more step. Uh, but just take a notice. In addition to the, in the previous example, where we had no friction on an incline, all we did was eliminate minus f sub k. If you could blank that out, um, that would be the same equation. We've just added an additional term to the numerator. Uh, let's just make that a little more interesting to look at. And we can write it this way. A equals m2g minus m1g sine theta minus, we can replace mu sub, uh, f sub k with mu sub k f sub n over m1 plus m2. We get a real fancy equation here. And then we finally get m2g minus m1g sine theta minus mu sub k. And now we can replace f sub n with m1g uh, cosine theta all over m1 plus m2. So now you probably have a headache, but that is the entire thing broken down into the very most basic values. And that's it.